Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Seth Blear, so much for being part of Valley Advocate Sessions tonight. It was a pleasure to have you on uh, this it's evening. It's an honor to be here. I'm a fan of what you guys do. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, uh, I know you have a new record out. Could you start by talking a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I put out this record entitled Birds. Um, it just came out on Empress Records, so I'll be touring for much of the rest of the year um, in support of that. And I actually made it uh, from my apartment in East Hampton. Um, I had done other ones in various different studios in Los Angeles and New York, but there was something about this uh, time around that it just felt I needed to kind of, I, I love, I love Western Mass, and I needed the sort of um, the 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 insularity and the protection that I had growing up in a small town around here. Um, I think it helped the process quite a bit. So, did you do a lot of the recording yourself? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I recorded it. Um, um, my my girlfriend ended up inheriting this 1925 Steinway piano a couple years ago, which is. Every once in a while, I let her play it, but it's uh, it, it it is definitely a, a quite a quite a bonus <laughs> uh, when it comes to home recording. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you can't you just can't like replicate that sound. Well, yeah, and and you know they're dream catchers, man. I I, I really think they're the way a piano is built. It's 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 built to to um, to hold things uh and 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 let them go when they're when they're ready it's just as alive as an idea and uh it seems like you've been playing music for, like for a long time i mean uh just switching between uh the guitar and piano and <laughs> uh it, i mean you got chops on both of those instruments thanks so. thanks I, I i i sort of you know fake it till you make it um <laughs> piano was always sort of my first love and guitar was always more more of a portable decision Gotcha. Um, so, c could you tell us a little bit about your tour? I, I know you you mentioned earlier um, uh, the plans to go through the Midwest mm -hmm. and other places. Yeah, I'll be um, I'll be traveling for about um, forty dates or so, um, and then actually wrapping up the tour uh, here in Northampton with two shows at the Iron Horse, December first and second. Um, and uh, and uh, I'm traveling with a three-piece. Um, it's my saxophone player who's been with me for five years now, uh, Joe Nerney, um, and then also an upright bass player from Nashville. Uh, her name is Rachel Coates. Now with the trio, do you still do sort of like the one-man band uh, oh, yeah, set up yeah, yeah. a little bit too? Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we'll all, I'm not the only one with, with doohickeys strapped to my limbs. The other, the other two are, uh, are, are well-versed in and making a bunch gotcha. of noise. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've uh, heard of the suitcase junket. Um, yeah, we, we had man. him in, in sessions. That is incredible. Yeah, he's like, he's sort of the the master. Well, and every once in a while, I did ask him how, you know, for we were saying earlier, I got to bring my shoes or I got to bring those things with me every time I get a new pair of shoes. So I'm always looking for different ways of of doing that. And uh, what Matt was saying to me is that because it's garbage that he's looking for, it it all breaks down. It's all a temporary thing, which is beautiful from an artistic sense, but from a continuity standpoint, that must be so frustrating. <laughs> Every time it's different, but it's wonderful. Now, do you have any, like, uh, when, when you set out to make a song, are, are there, like, common themes that you come back to or um, kind of like an artistic mission? Artistic mission. Um, well, I think I'm. I'm definitely one of the things I'm really aware of now, and I think some of this is has to do with our political climate. But as a songwriter, the way in which you tell a story has the power to change a story, and I think that it's really important for me to to try to line up a song that makes sure that it's serving it's serving whatever feeling I'm trying to convey but there's there's a there's a bigger world inside of it than 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 just me um, and I I suppose that some of that came from my my brother my brother was born with autism and so I was a care provider for him and I think that instilled the sense of um, advo advocacy um, um, and so in in my the mission of what I'm trying to to work on writing wise is, I um, 
I want it to sound um, uh, just authentic and, and, and I want it to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable too, you know? I think that, I think you can do both. All right, well, thank you so much uh, for, for being part of Sessions tonight and Thanks, for the man. interview. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Dude. Thanks. Awesome. Cool, guys. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks for letting me use your PA, guys.